My name is Artemis and the furry fandom has always been something that has rebelled against the mainstream. We have always been something that is used as an escape from it. And what do I mean by mainstream? Well, of course, I mean the mainstream of popular culture. Things that society generally believes is normal. Things that everybody can universally understand and accept. You, you know what mainstream is. We're talking Disney, Star Wars, all of that kind of shit. Everybody knows what it is instantly and everybody accepts it if you like it which doesn't really sound like us does it we've always used it as an escape from that but well on that note it seems that the mainstream is always encroaching always possibly going to be taking us on we might be entering it any day now and i'm not entirely convinced that's really a good thing because there's a lot of shit that comes with it and wow would you look at that we're about to talk about that shit so let's get into it one of the biggest factors and attractors of the fandom to people who are in it is, of course, its escapism. It is a place that we can use to escape from the real world, whether it's to do with our hobbies or the way that we socialise, because not everybody wants to go to a bar and get drunk or go and hang out at a football game. We have found a place that we can go and be who we want to be, act how we want to act, and express things how we want to express them amongst people who share those values, who share those desires as well. We have found a place that allows us to escape from the normal society in which we don't really traditionally fit in all that well and find somewhere that we do fit in. That is a huge point of attraction. And yet we're not totally against normal society, obviously we don't want to burn the whole goddamn thing down, it's not like that. But sometimes some people just need a way to get out of that shit and find something that truly matters to them. And that's exactly what this fandom is to so many of us. But it's not just that we need an escape, sometimes we just need that division between one thing and the other. For some people, that division between their furry life and their normie life is sacred. It is something they hold in high esteem, and I can definitely understand why. You see, the furry fandom is a wonderful, accepting, lovely place that we all know and love. It also carries with it a lot of assumptions, a lot of rumours, and unfortunately, a lot of assholes who have acted in very shitty ways and have tarnished its reputation. Which means when you identify as part of the furry fandom, you are accidentally, inadvertently also identifying as being attached with some of these things. And if other people know that, it can be a very difficult stain to wash yourself clean of. So I can definitely understand how some people cherish this division, being able to keep things separate because not everybody has to know everything about you. And while you can come to this fandom and be very open with everything, your character, your personality, hell, fuck it, your kinks, let's just say it, you can. You can be open with the ways you socialize, who you want to be. It is very comforting to know that you don't have to be that way in your everyday life all the goddamn time as well. And obviously the more we enter the mainstream, the less that becomes possible. The easier it is for everybody to know everything, and that's just not what some people are in this game for. Sometimes you do flat out need to be able to put one thing aside and compartmentalize to then focus on another. And with that level of overexposure, there also happens to be other problems that we run into as well. And with that overexposure comes some problems as well. You see, the whole world is geared around making money. That is unfortunately the truth, but money is what makes the whole deal fucking spin and float and do all that stuff. And unfortunately, the same happens in the fandom, only we choose to give our money to the very people that create and make this fandom exactly what it is. The people who maintain it, the independent artists and makers and creators. That's what this fandom loves and adores. That's what we love to build up and support because that's a very clear part of our philosophy as the furry fandom, that is what we like to do. And it is lovely when people can find a way to find that support in a community and find their living off of doing something that they love for people who love what they do. It's magical, it's lovely. And unfortunately, the closer we get to popularity, the more that is under threat. You see, when you get that close to popularity and people start to see, oh, there could be money to be made over there, you tend to attract the attention of people who will just exploit the shit out of it. And we've already seen that. We've already seen people try it. I mean, when you look at the artwork, you look at a lot of the unique physical products that people sell, and of course, you look at the fursuits. You can see how people would see that and think, oh, yeah, people really like those things and they spend money on them. We can mass produce that shit. And they've tried, and it's low quality wank that nobody actually takes seriously, but it's still a problem that that's already started happening. 
We, we really don't fucking want corporations rolling in and seeing this fandom that we hold so close to our hearts, something that is so important to us and so important to the artists who rely on it for their income to get completely steamrolled by low quality but really cheap bullshit like this kind of crap. This is the problem when you go mainstream. Everybody starts looking at you like a meal ticket and we don't want them to cash us in. Now, we've all made the point a million times that the fandom is not a sexual place, that it does involve sexual things, but is not inherently sexual, and I don't think we need to retread that ground because we've tread it so fucking much, okay? It's not a kink, it's not a fetish, it just happens to involve kinks and fetishes, just like every single other thing under the fucking sun, okay? And this place does have a sizable sexual component to it, again, like everything else does, but we also have an air of openness and acceptance and just no shame. Like, people can be open about the things that they enjoy with consenting adults who also enjoy those things. We create mini little communities around that within this larger community and people can find a place where not only do they not feel alone, but they don't feel ashamed. They can share, they can enjoy this part of themselves. And that's kind of magical when you think about it because you can't exactly just go down the pub and be like, oh guys, yeah, this football match is fucking brilliant, but also anybody ever wanted to be shit on? Obviously it doesn't work. But of course, the closer we get to popularity and entering the mainstream, the more visible we become. And the more visible we become, the more you feel the pressure to make everything safe for work, to make everything family friendly, to make everything as sugar-coated and homogenized and basic as possible to not offend people. Because that's for some reason something that everybody fucking does. Everybody ends up dumbing themselves down and hiding all of this shit that they've had on blast for so long when they enter this thing as if it's no longer a part of them. And I get it. It's how you build an audience. It's how you increase that audience, how you get the best audience share. But we don't need that shit. We have our own audience. We are our own audience. And we have done that by being who we are unapologetically, by liking what we like unapologetically. But the more we start bringing this out into the light, the more we start showing this, people might not want to have every single thing about them on blast all the time. Especially when it's going to be used in ridicule, when people will be using that as a target. When you've built yourself up to feel comfortable with who you are and what you represent, to have that then be targeted again just because this whole thing got more popular than it was when you started, that takes a very heavy toll. And we don't need to go through that shit Okay, we have done pretty well regulating things ourselves. We have adult-only spaces at cons. We have not safe for work groups. We have after dark accounts. We have websites that are adults only. And that's great, that's how we regulate it. That's how we can balance having a sexual side and a non-sexual side. But the closer we get to the mainstream and the more popular we get, that sexual side, that adults only side, gets doled down and hidden and pushed to the side. And we just focus on the shit that everybody can fucking look at. And we need to keep that balance just how we've kept it. Because we've done well with that. So what are we supposed to do? How do we stop all of this nasty shit happening? Well, we need to find a balance as a fandom. We need to find a way to stand up and say, yep, we are a part of the world. There are many people that hold the same core values as us, but also we're fucking separate, okay? We're, we're out of the main bullshit, you know? We, we deserve the acceptance, but we don't demand inclusion. Okay, we're a part of the world, but we're not a part of that system. We don't need you coming in and doing the things that we're already doing for ourselves. And it's a very fine line to walk. Because unfortunately, a lot of the things that will keep these corporations away are things that also not everybody's on board with. Sometimes you need to let that freak flag fly high, but sometimes you need to put it in someone else's face and say, look, just fuck off, okay? Sorry, Disney, you know, we like using your products and your IPs, but we also don't want you coming in and ruining this like you did with Star Wars. Yes, that's right, I said it. The fandom has always been its own insular little community that supports itself, and it needs to continue to be that. And we can't really tolerate when corporations come in, when AI comes in, when anything comes in that usurps that norm. Okay, like we're all for growth, we're all for moving with the times, we're all for technology. But when it comes at the expense of people's livelihoods and the core ethics of the fandom itself of supporting individuals, makers and businesses, that's when we stomp that shit out. And thankfully, as a fandom, we do generally do that. Like, we do. 
But you see these things come up here and there. You see when people want to sugarcoat the fandom and they want to make everything safe for work. That's the sort of thing that opens the door to a company coming in and saying, oh look, they put the dicks away, now we can start charging them for shit. We don't fucking want that, okay? <laughs> It's a very hard balance to find. It's a very hard line to walk, but so far we've been doing a good job of walking it. We just need to keep making sure that that's where our focus lies because we don't want to be a part of all of that. We want to find an escape from that and we need to continue to be an escape from that. And let's hope we fucking can. Thank you very much for watching. Hopefully you enjoyed this video because I had a lot to say and had to really condense this shit down. But I hope you got my point that we are our own thing and don't need to go pandering to the mainstream just to be found as valid and, you know, worthwhile because we already are those things. We're lovely. We're wonderful. Do we have problems we need to iron out? Fucking right we do. But do we need to enter the mainstream to do that? Fucking right we don't. But... Hell, if you did enjoy this video and you think, oh, I'd like to support that blue dog, well, I'll just make room for these graphics right here that might give you opportunities to do just that. Because, yeah, look, I got feet, I got paws. I will fucking flaunt them for money because I, I too am unashamed, unabashed, and desperate for a way to survive in this hellhole world of mine. We also have shirts and hoodies and paw cushions and shit like that, which is, they're all fucking pretty cool. I mean, they're all fucking, look at them. They're fucking nice designs. Independently made as well. Good artist. You should definitely check that shit out. It's getting colder as well. You know you need a good cushion. You know you need a good hoodie. So check that shit out. It's a matter of health and safety. And of course, if you would just like to support us, maybe speak to me, which is allegedly a thing that you can do. Actually, it is. It's one of the benefits. And be involved in shit and have input in videos. Maybe even have a video just custom made just for you. Me being a sarcastic, salty bitch. Then you can do that too. Check it out. There's loads of benefits to be had. But thank you very much for watching. Hopefully you did enjoy this video. And I guess I'll see you all next week. Bye.